We may be witnessing the death of nature, an expert warns. This is by Dr. Daryl Lynch on the conversation, Science Alert. Recently I encountered, he said, the thought-provoking expression, God is dead, Marx is dead, and I don't feel so well myself. I wonder if it's now the time to update this by adding nature is dead, he says. Has nature, framed as being separate to humanity, lost its relevance? Does humanity's exceptionalist mindset, as famed biologist E. O. Wilson suggests, leave us contemptuous towards lower forms of life? Globally, we've entered the Anthropocene, with humans to the dominant force driving changes in all ecosystems. Through our overwhelming influence on the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere, no ecosystem anywhere is sheltered from our influence, whether it be through colonial redistribution of species, habitat loss, the diverse forces of climate change, overextraction or pollution by plastics, forever chemicals and reactive nitrogen and phosphorus, there is no unaltered ecosystem. As some of these forces of change combine, ecosystems are being pushed past tipping points of collapse at a faster rate. During the COVID pandemic, incidences of reverse zoonosis in which Humans became the reservoir and source of infection for domesticated and wild animals emphasize how the fate of humanity and all creatures sharing the biosphere is linked. The crisis of the Anthropocene. As a result of the Anthropocene, this period of time when human activity is enormously impacting the planet, global biodiversity is in crisis with species extinction occurring at a thousand times the pre-human rate, Addressing this crisis is one of our greatest challenges. The Half Earth Project contends that only by preserving 50% of global surface habitat will we preserve 85% of species. But setting aside land for nature, such as in parks and reserves, has often meant depriving indigenous people of their lands instead of respecting and prioritizing the role of indigenous people in biosphere preservation. While the increasing size of protected areas to 17% of land and 10% of oceans, respectively, by, Ju uh, by 2020, is encouraging, the effectiveness of their management is preserving biodiversity is still largely to be determined. Supporting biodiversity. We are recognizing, however, that biodiversity can also be supported everywhere and in everything we do. Urban landscapes can support greater biodiversity, such as of pollinators and farm landscapes can contribute depending on the intensity of farming. School children increasingly are no longer taking, taken on trips into nature, but instead learn in settings where they develop a reciprocal re relationship with the land and living world. As the English poet Gerald Hamley Hopkins wrote, what would the world be once bereft of wet and of wildness let them be left, oh, let them be left, wildness, wildness and wet, long live the weeds and the wilderness yet. Relationships with nature? At a breakout discussion group I participated in during the Regeneration Canada conference, we were asked to describe our community. Many described their urban and rural community, and I spoke about my academic community, my students and colleagues. A young Mohawk man began by describing a corpse of birch trees on his land as his, commu as his community. For the rest of us, present man had been overpresented when speaking of community. For essayist and philosopher Sylvia Winter, the invention and overpresentation of man, overrepresentation of man, a category that emerges from European rational thought, is distinct from nature and is the underpinning concept that enable its history of colonization, colonialism, and racism. Some academics, becoming aware of the profound effects of climate change, have declared that the wall between human history and natural history was now broken. A historian, Dipesh Chakrabarti, proposed in his famous paper, The Climate of History, Four Theses, this collapse of chronologies means key motives in contemporary human history such as the struggle for freedom, are now inextricably linked to the fate of the biosphere. 
Historians should thus, thus combine their contemporary history studies with that of our longer history as one species among many. Ecologists are recognizing that othering the, na the natural world is meaningless and the study of natural processes has to include those modified by, by mankind. Indeed, the idea of ourselves as distinct from all non-humans is considered by some to be the fundamental driver of our current planetary crisis. Given such deepening understanding, is it now the time to go beyond nature as a concept external to humanity? Instead, we could promote a deeper understanding of biodiversity and community as a shared long history and future fate, both of humanity and non-human life. Such revised paradigms are closer to indigenous viewpoints of, of community in which land management is conducted in partnership with our relatives within all ecosystems. Have we reached the end of nature in its traditional meaning as distinct from us? Reframing our relationship with nature is an important step to deepen our commitment to addressing these human-made environmental crises. This is from Derek Lick, Professor of Agronomy and Agroecology at Dalhousie University. It's uh, from created, uh, Conversation under Creative Commons on Science Alert. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.